مقدسنا ان ده هولي سبيريت وان جاد امين توداي ذا فيرست سانداي اوف ذا بليسد مانث كياك از يو نو وي ار نوت سيليبريتينج ذا ناتيفيتي اوف ذا لورد ان ذس مانث وي ار نوت سيليبريتينج ذا ناتيفيتي بيكوز ان ذا تشيرش وي نوت سيليبريتينج ايفنتس ان ذا لايف اوف ذا لورد بات يوجوالي وي سيليبريت ذا لورد هيمسلف ذا فيست ان ذا تشيرش ات از نوت ا داي The feast in the church is the Lord Himself. So in the Old Testament, the Lord gave to His people seven feasts. And also in the New Church, in the New Testament, in the Church of God, we have seven feasts to the Lord in the church. Number seven represents the Lord Himself, Emmanuel. Four plus three. Three representing the Holy Trinity. And four representing the whole world in its four directions and its four seasons. So four plus three representing God with us, Emmanuel. So we are not celebrating in this month the nativity of the Lord, but we are celebrating the Lord Himself who came to us and who will come in the second coming of in His glory. And we are celebrating the Lord in all, in all His life that He gave to each one of us in His incarnation. So while we are celebrating today the Lord in His first coming, we are also celebrating the Lord in His second coming. So when you try to make a comparison between the first coming and second coming of the Lord, you will find the same. Today the Lord prepared His people to His first coming through the appearance of angel Gabriel and the birth of John the Baptist. The second coming will be the same. The Lord will send His angels to gather all His people from the four winds of the heaven. And He will send the new John the Baptist and the new Elijah to prepare for his second coming. So while we are celebrating this month, yes, the first coming of the Lord, we are celebrating his second coming. So as he said that he will come again in the midnight, we usually pray the midnight praises of Kiak in the midnight to celebrate his second coming. Yes, the church is above time. Every liturgy we say after we praise Amin Amin, your death we proclaim, we say now, now, We are commemorating your birth, your death, your resurrection, and we are commemorating your second coming. Today, yes, I can understand logically that we can in the liturgy commemorate the best, but in the liturgy we are commemorating both the best and the future. All of them in just one minute, the minute of eternity. So through this, we are today celebrating the Lord himself. In his first coming, in his second coming. Are you ready to his second coming? Are you ready to celebrate his first and his second coming? So the church prepared us through the, the readings today to examine ourselves. So we want to speak just <coughs> in three points. The first point, be ready to the second coming of the Lord through giving. In the... Gospel of the Vesper that we read yesterday. According to St. Mark 14. Yes. He spoke about and being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, he sat at the table. A woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard, and she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. So the first pillar to examine yourself, if we are ready or not, for the second coming of the Lord, the word giving. The whisper, the Lord gave us the example of the woman who gave above, above what she, what she owed. She gave an alabaster flask of fragrant oil more than 300 denarii. It represents now more than $50,000. She gave out of her love. That is the first example about giving. And you will see the picture more clear 
when you read carefully the gospel of the matin early morning that the church read for us today it's amazing from the book of mark 12 now jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich put in much then one poor widow came and threw in two mites which make a quadrant he called his disciples to him and said to them assuredly i say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury yes for they all put in out of their abundance but she out of her poverty put in all that she had her whole livelihood is that clear the first point the church will want to focus giving to give love is not to to receive or to take but love is to is to give that is the first point so examine ourselves let us examine ourselves but be careful when the father god the father gave he gave a gift equal to him he gave us his son and his holy spirit equal to him today you are in the liturgy you are coming very close to the father he will give us his son and his spirit so when we want to give to the father when we want to react to his love we have to react in the same way so giving is not to give your ties but giving is to give yourself so that is the first point the lord not looking forward our pockets but he is looking forward our hearts ourselves he in the liturgy today will give us his son and his spirit he will give us a gift equal to him we say in the creed i believe that the son is equal to his father so when you give try to make a gift or to offer a gift equal to you equal to your love and there is today in these days nothing equal to our lives except to time so when you want to honor the lord give him time give him time that is the first point according to the two first readings of the church readings today both of them from the book of mark the story of the woman who gave the fragrant anointed the lord with the fragrant oil the second the uh, widow who gave two mites all her livelihood to the lord the second point how can i examine myself the second point through faith yes through faith so we'll find the second two readings focus on the faith let us read with each other the first reading from the book of saint paul to the romans he says paul a servant of jesus christ called to be an apostle separated to the gospel of god which he promised before through his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son jesus christ our lord so the father promised us to give us his son jesus christ who was born of the seed of david according to the flesh and declared to be the son of god with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead through whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom you also are called of jesus christ to all who are in rome beloved of god called to be saints grace to you peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ first i thank my god through jesus christ for you all that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world i am praying for myself and for all of you to have this faith who can saint paul and the saints of the church can say the face of the church of saint mark the sea is spoken all over the world examine your faith are you in the level of this faith that the lord can reveal it and can so be proud of this faith among all the whole world or not so by the end of the epistle today he says i am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in rome also for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god to salvation for everyone who believes it is very clear 
to everyone who believes he will receive the power the power that the son of god gave it to our nature when he accepted death in his nature and through this power he was resurrected again so when you believe in this even if you went through death you will receive the power and you will be resurrected again believe in this so he says he conclude the epistle saying for the Jew first and also for the Greek for in it righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith it is written the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith the same words in the epistle of St James in the Catholic epistle he focused <coughs> on the faith he said James a servant of God and of Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings my brethren count it count it all joy when you fall into various trials how it comes can I give thanks for the hard time for the trials yes because this is the way to examine your faith this is the way no way to examine your faith except through passing through trials and hard times so he said again my brethren count it all joy that is opposite the opposite that what i think what i feel what i want but he says my brethren count it all joy the lord did not give children to elizabeth and to zacharias for many years and he said to them count it all joy how it comes i have no children count it all joy you don't know my time you don't know my plan but trust me count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience so through having these trials in our in our life we can examine our faith what is faith faith is to trust god do you trust that he is a father do you trust him as a kind as a good god as a kind a compassionate god do you trust in him sometimes we want him to to give us to understand his actions but it is impossible how can we reach his mind how can we reach his wisdom but just <coughs> have faith in him believe in him so the first word was to give to give like the woman who get anointed the lord with the alabaster a flask of fragrant oil number two like the widow who gave the two mites all what she had give that is the sign and be careful that your gift has to be equal to yourself as the father gave us his son we have to give us to give him ourselves and our families number two faith examine your faith as saint paul said from faith to faith from glory to glory examine your faith let your faith be spoken all over the world and saint james said count it all joy when you fall into various trials because this is the way to test your faith finally from the book of acts how can i practically give to the lord and have faith in him there is no way except one word to pray to pray and to pray we have two levels of prayers the first level to pray in the lord in your inner room in your having personal relationship with him the second way as a church as the body of lord jesus christ so let us see what saint luke wrote for us in the book of acts the last verse he spoke about the 12 apostle and saint mary what did they do after the resurrection after the ascension of the lord he said these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplications with the women and mary the mother of jesus and with his brothers they continued to pray from day to day as one body as one group yes yes we need this we need to feel that we are one body 
because we are in San Marco here, we are praying in a very huge, very mega church, we lost this feeling to feel that we are one family, that we are one group, to pray with each other as, as one, one body, one body. The best example to pray as one body in the church from the book of Luke today, the story of Zacharias that we are celebrating today, when he entered to the house of God, the temple, and he offered the incense. The building of the temple of God was built the same like the church, two parts, the outer part and the inner part. The inner part contains two parts, the holy and the holy of holies. Always the, 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 the Ark of Covenant was inside the holy of holies, separated from the holy by the veil. But in front of the veil, it was the altar of incense from the pure gold. And in the left side of the book, uh, of the altar of incense, the, lamb, the bread, the table for, for the bread. And on the right side, the lamb stand, carrying the light. While Zacharias entered in front of the veil, before the altar of incense and he offered the incense, he burned the incense, suddenly the angel of God appeared to him. And he did not say he came, but he said he appeared. It means that every liturgy, the angels around us in, in a mysterious way. When he offered the incense, he saw for the first time the angel of God and he said to him, let us read the story. They both, Zechariah and Elizabeth, were both righteous before God, walking in all the commands and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. They had no child because Elizabeth was barren. And they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense, between the, incense, the, the altar of incense and the table of the bread. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you son, and you shall call him name John. You will shall call his name John. That is the way. Yes, most of us give special attention to the gospel. And we try to come to the church to listen to the gospel and be ready to receive the communion. But today the Lord gave us a mystery. If you want to receive the message of God, come at the time of offering the incense before the liturgy, early morning. We have a special sacrifice in the church called the matin and the vesper to offer the incense. Come early, join the church as body of the Lord and pray and pray and pray. One time, the Lord will give you his mission, his vision. All your prayers were accepted, were heard in the ear of the Lord. But in the, in the best time, he will give you his vision. So pray and, <coughs> and believe that your prayer, your prayer were accepted and were heard. And in the best time, the Lord will answer and he'll, He will respond and He will give you joy and happiness. Yes, you may pray it for something or for someone in your life asking the Lord to touch Him. Until now, the Lord did not respond. You know, he responded, he has already accepted your prayer, but the time to reveal his, his acceptance will be very, very, very soon. I am praying this for myself and for all of you to be ready to the second coming of the Lord as we were ready to his first coming. To offer, to give, not some of what we have, but to give ourselves as he gave us his son. Number two, to have faith in Him. Number three, to pray in our personal level 
and in our church level. And glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now, forever. Amen.